I'd say just let's let okay. let it roll, and we can talk about it afterwards. Yeah, but okay. yeah, a, a, an amazing, amazing yeah. couple. All right. Well, then let's just we'll just listen. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're back still again. We're here, Caliente, enjoying our amazing day. This I has keep been talking an about it, day. but it's such a gorgeous day. Beautiful, so, beautiful day. Yeah, the temperature is amazing, fantastic. The party vibe is great. We've got things going on, and we're joined here with with you guys. So could you introduce yourself, and then can you tell everybody, our listeners, how long you've been in the lifestyle? My name is Lynn. We started in the lifestyle in the 90s with a group of friends, and I don't even remember how we even got into it initially. I'm Hugh, by the way. I'm I'm Lynn's Lynn's husband. We actually went by ourselves, and we eventually we met people there that like that we bonded with. You know, at first it was sexual, but then over the years that dropped off and we became very good friends with them. And this is kind of what we found in, in lifestyle activities is that people you meet in the lifestyle, the sex was, may be a part of it for a while, but then even after that, it doesn't necessarily have to be. There's a certain forged closeness that you get with these people. But when we first went to, in those days, there was trapeze and Plato's in Fort Lauderdale. And we went to Plato's and I remember we were in some situation, maybe a hot tub or something, and I saw blue lights, and I was like, oh my God, the police are here. Oh, yeah, and we, we were <laughs> so freaked out. Like, they're gonna take pictures of us. Oh, we gave them a fake name. You were gonna name. be raided. Oh, yeah. we, we gave, gave them a, them fake, a fake name, name when we were like, everything. Uh, can we have your name and, and uh, address? And I gave them all totally fake information. We were so nervous, so yeah, scared. So we thought we were scared. doing something so illicit. But anyway, that didn't last long, and then... <laughs> <laughs> so you were able to, to uh, overcome, overcome the nerves, that, yeah. that, that fear? Yeah, but, but it we, was... So this even is back the 90s, then, there were no though. resources. Right. I mean, this is like the late 90s. I mean, I think we were introduced to it by an AOL chat room. Okay. I don't know if you... That's probably not. It's a little... Before your time. time. (laughs) What's AOL? (laughs) (laughs) Well, back in the old (laughs) days. Always suspect someone with an AOL email address. Yes, that's their their email. No, that's how it was back then. So there weren't resources. No. So 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 AOL was how you kind of, the chat room? That's how we, like, we've always been kind of adventurous. Okay. And I found this chat room. I said, well, let's, let's just see what's going on. Of course, it's like one of these free-ranging chats. It was not organized. It was just like one comment after another. And so we started chatting with people and finding out about the clubs and said, well, let's just do it one time. We were were relatively young and we were adventurous and it was right down the street. But again, we were like petrified. I mean, even then, but we still had our parents that we had to worry about, our children. We were always afraid that we'd see one of our kids' friends in there. (laughs) (laughs) That would be very embarrassing. That's and your fine. and your boss, I think, at the time. But then I think we got like we got very. It was a different time back then too. So we'd be in the playrooms, and if I saw a woman like sitting lonely by herself, I'd be like, "Hey, come join us." You know, it was just very inclusive and nice. And I remember we were in a room by ourselves, and there was some chick with us, and I'm like, "Hey, come on." It's not. It wasn't the same back then as it is now. That's an interesting point. So better then? Do you feel it was a it was in or some ways different? I think it in some ways I think it was better. And I'm not totally into the whole, you know, house party <laughs> swinging whoever you want type of thing. Like for us it's more relationship driven. Uh-huh. I don't know. We were in a different place and then we left it alone for a long time. We were like, no, this is not fitting in for us right now. But then somehow and I don't even remember how we got back into it. Well and we picked the like perfect time to get back into the lifestyle right during the pandemic. <laughs> we, oh yeah. We took a bunch of pictures. We're on SDC, yeah. so we posted a bunch of things. It's the pandemic. So of course we're not getting a lot of uh, hits, but we did meet this one couple that kind of like they, they mentored us. They, they back mentored into us the into the, the 21st in a, century in a very group. gracious way, I Aww. might add. Yeah, they were lovely, and they were really good friends, and kind of taught us how things are now. And we had a lot of questions about that, like, well, how does this work? How do the parties work? They told us all kinds of secrets, like Horror guys injecting stories. and this, that, that, whatever. And we had no idea because we've been out of it for a long time. 
But we learned what not to do from them because they, they had like nothing but horror stories. Going to a, a party that was in somebody's condo, they had to wait down in the waiting area, all dressed in their slut gear, while people like normal people are going back and forth because the couple wasn't ready for them to come up to the condo. Oh, oh. oh so I felt like, like well, I learned from then on, I, I wear a coat over my yeah. outfit. So that was a little, little tidbit that you got from her. And then uh, they hosted parties. They told a story about some woman who was doing shots and got super drunk and then passed out and hit her head. They had to call 911 and their son was working the 911. He was the paramedic. Oh. They heard, oh, they, heard the, they heard the yes. address and he goes, Mom, Dad, are you all right? They go, don't come. Don't come. <laughs> <laughs> and he's getting all the condoms out. You know, he's yeah. he's oh, scooping them God. into a bag and <laughs> getting everything, like trying to get cleaned up. But so he said, like, you know, we, that's how we kind of like fine tuned what we thought we would like and what we didn't. I mean, it, it, plus at this juncture in life, like we were talking about earlier, we were in for the thrill. You're like, oh, this is. This is fun. Strangers. Yeah, we've done that already. So that's what I was just saying. So that at the beginning, yeah. way back, so in the 90s, early 2000s, yeah, that's we what it was about for you at early, that time. Early, late yes. 30s, early 40s. That was, so uh, our drive was, was different. That was the edgy, like, inspiration for us. And then what happened was I went on hormones, and so I got reinterested in sex, and that's how the new evolution of us became... And so we were much more evolved as far as the relationships we wanted to have, the clo very open mm -hmm. to experiences and the whole polyamorous idea. And that's been a very interesting thing for us. It's made us grow and it's made us understand each other a lot more and be closer together, which I love about that. And there's been a lot of road bumps. As you all know, there are always road bumps. And I think navigating that is, it's interesting. So if you don't mind, so you alluded when you first started swinging, you were in your late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. So 40s. now you're... Oh, you, oh, my age? Yes. Oh, you're... I'm 67. Okay. And so, totally different spaces and places in life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and set it on the back burner those years ago. It wasn't necessarily important. I don't think it even it wasn't even a thought. Really, it was you know, just, it over, just kind of since 2003 to 2020. I don't I think, think we it were, ever entered. We were involved in different periods of our life sure. where we were raising kids oh no grandkids probably is what it was we we're in the grandkid era and it wasn't that important to us but somehow we navigated back to to that which is good good for us so lynn one of the things that i've been talking a lot about on on the on our recent episodes for me is moving now into the phase where my body is changing and so the hormones and the things like that so interesting that you're saying that for you that's a recent thing that you went on the hormones and then became back inside back interested in sex or how did that work for you if you don't mind talking about that no not at all so our we met when i was 39 and he was 35 and sex was a huge part of our relationship. Like, it, it was driven by sex. And then when I became postmenopausal, I would say I was totally uninteresting, didn't want to I liked sex still, but I just would never initiate it. So we had a very rough period where, and that, this is a problem when you're married to a younger husband, I, he hung in there with me, which I love him for, but I, it was a shitty time. And I think my focus was on my, I had a business and my kids and my grandkids did it. And then finally I realized, okay, if I don't do something to get back to where I was, I'm gonna lose this person. And not, I don't think I did it for him, I did it for myself. And I had flirted with bioidentical hormone replacement in various ways for years, but I became serious about it and it changed my life. Really? Changed my life. And it's changed the life of some of my friends too. So I would say 
if you're that 60 year old woman that emails you and says well how can I be like I don't feel like I can you got to get your hormones you got to get them you got to get them balanced you got to get them to where you are you as a natural person so do you feel like that brought you back to oh being? totally really oh, totally yeah. it was like night and day really so you feel you have your wife back and Definitely. you feel a, human again a different I, version of it really but also it just like enhanced her enjoyment of not just sex and exploration but just everything you know so it, it was a, it was a real it was a real profound shift it, it worked out well i mean I know there's a lot of stigma with the hormones and like health related issues, but I think that if you have a, a good, like like your your clinic, clinicians kind of guided you through that, it's yeah. worked out well for you and some and some of the friends. Once she goes around and tells all of her friends about what she's doing, they're saying, where can I get them? Right. So I have a pro- really beautiful girlfriend who is 63, I think, she's gorgeous. And I, girlfriend as in lover, well, girlfriend, girlfriend? No, 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 girlfriend, not lover, just a friend. But friend, okay. friend. Uh-huh. And when I first met her, she said, I haven't had sex for 10 years. And she's only 63? And I said, whoa, 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 what? <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I got you. This is what you're going to do because you can't be this gorgeous and you're not having sex. What is wrong with you? And so I think three weeks later she went to the same clinic I do and she's now she's younger guys and having a great time so if you lose that part of you who are you you're not you anymore right and I think we have to stop thinking about the fact that we need to gracefully grow old we don't that's a choice right if that's what you want to do hey god bless you but I feel more alive than I felt. I feel better than I felt in my 40s, for real. Really? And that has allowed... Same? And that has allowed you to then open up and be well, in more the, exploration of your own self yes, and your because own desires now you bring, and your own journeys? Right, because you bring wisdom into it too. So not only do you have the drive, but you have the love and the acceptance and the wisdom to have much deeper relationships than you would have had like 20 or 30 years ago, right? You realize so, how how really powerful sex is. It's it, it's almost spiritual in a way. And you sort of almost, I think we're at the point, well, yeah, you could have, we, we grew up having anonymous sex. Yeah, we had plenty of one-off encounters, but right. once you get older, you kind of realize how deep and, and touching and significant of a force it is in your life. And, and it just, creates love, you know, a small L or a large L. Not necessarily romantic love, but just you just love everybody and you want to share that. I'm sure you all experience the same thing. You you have so much more than you thought you did. So something I want to share and I didn't know about is, so Hugh has a girlfriend and when she comes to stay with us, she'll stay for a night or two nights when her husband's out of town. He knows that she's coming. And I get so much pleasure out of that. And I discovered the word composure, Mm -hmm. which I literally can be in the kitchen listening to them having sex. And I am smiling very widely and feeling extremely happy. And I think that's the most evolved place you can get to in this. And I have a lot of swinger friends that go, what the f- are you doing? You can't go there like you're giving him up. No, I'm not. I'm perfectly okay with that. And they don't get it. And I think right. that's when, you know, the swinger world and the non-monogamous and the polyamorous world are not necessarily cohesive, right? Right. right. There's a they're, lack of understanding. Yep. Have you read the book, um, Open Deeply? Yeah, uh, where the swingers are the accountants, they have their rules and you don't cross those, you don't cross those lines because it's dangerous. The emotional connections are dangerous for swingers. I'm much more into the emotional connections, right?
And we actually talk about that a lot. And part of us talking to other people and bringing more voices to non-monogamy to show people that it, it's a, it's very different for different different couples, different people. We originally were like, well, we'll have to be the anonymous sex people because we get too emotional with people and that we're not gonna get into that mess. That's not what our marriage is about. And then instantly Fed realized we can't do that. That's not who we are. Like I can't I just I like You get attached. I I, you I form do. A bond. I'm a I'm if a you're doing it right, person. you form right, a bond. Right. And Phoenix, that's exactly what I was saying. Phoenix always says, like, if I want to go to bed to f you, I already have some kind of an emotional connection. There's got to yeah. be, gotta be a, a reason for having sex with somebody. Right, because there's so something the... that has lit that fire. But not everybody is like that, and that's, that's okay. Fine. No, and you have to separate the sport f***ing thing right. from the emotional attachment thing. Right. So I can sport f that's fine. It's fun. I the time can finish the evening it. going, ha ha ha, that was amazing. <laughs> and, but it means nothing right. to me. And it's not a continued relationship. And that's the appeal of this is when you have, you guys have this perfect thing that is almost impossible to achieve. And we actually have it with another couple where we all four of us will have had sex and then we're lying in bed together going, it doesn't get better than this. <laughs> like this, this. It's rare. He loves him. They love each other. She and I love each other. I love him. He loves her. That doesn't happen. If you hit that, don't let go. Don't ever, ever let go because that's, that's the magic place. It's a pretty magical place. Yeah, it is. We absolutely and agree. It's very, and it's not easy. I would say no. it's very hard to sometimes uh, you never know and this we talked you and i were chatting about the universe earlier the universe kept us apart we laugh about how many missed times we did not meet yeah. each other really? until the time we ended when up it was right yeah you and how we walk, we walk in the hotel how did that lobby happen? in New Orleans. We all live, we live 15 miles from each other and we literally missed them at meetups, meet greets for a year. We actually and had them at Naughty New Orleans the year before that. In passing. And never. You had said, hey, y'all want to meet up? And you're like, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He reached out and said, do we want to meet up? And we were, we, it was the, so it was all these things. And we talk about it later. It's like, wow, that's kind of really cool. So you never know where those things no, are going to come. No, but something I noticed about all of you, you all have the same openness in your eyes. <laughs> and when, you, when you've been in polyamorous relationships and very open relationships, you tend to take that on, I feel like. So you looked at me and I was like, mm, I know you. <laughs> Instantly last night. Yes. Yeah. Right? We, we looked at each other in the bar and like, it was just, it, yeah, I got it was instant, you. Like, just my friend. Like, where have you been? Like, I, like, well, because, I, get you, yeah. like, I mean, we were really like, it was yes. just like instant. Yes. Like, but right. you do the same thing <laughs> and it's a very honest, and you do the same thing. That's it's one of the most amazing compliments I've ever had, by the way, that you can look at me and feel that. Yes. And, and Well, because you feel it. You're open and it's, it's almost, it's magical. I have friends who are vanilla friends that say to me, I want this energy from you. I don't know where it comes from. And I'm like, well, it's about having exposed myself to people and this is who you get. You want to come in? I'm here, right? Which I don't think we could have done when we were younger. No. You know, there's all sorts of insecurities, no. all right. sorts of egos. In your 30s and, and 40s, you can't, you can't do that. Stuff. Jealousies. I mean, I think we were all much more, you know, like these guys. You're like very much macho. Like, no, you're not going to get with my woman. You know, they uh -huh. can't do that. So this is something that allowed us. Time, time has been very beneficial to exploring the depth that I don't think we would have been able to do really? in our 30s and 40s. But a lot you of nuances, you as you guys have that, know. You all have that look in your eyes, and it's something that you recognize with people like, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, I see you. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah you could be my friend. <laughs> it's not really to do with sex, even. It's just about being open to possibilities and relationships, and that's the beautiful thing about it. And that is a beautiful way to say that, because that's exactly true.
and so many people think, well, if you have to be in the lifestyle, it means you have to have sex with everybody that's also no. in the lifestyle. And it's like, no. no. It's just the law. So <laughs> here's another thing. I don't know if you ever felt this, but I was really not into women back then. Like, I would, I'd be going down on a woman in a playroom somewhere, and I'd be like, can you come help me out? I'm like, I would just done. feel the arm, the hand coming like, <laughs> Hey, can and you grab my I don't shoulder? Know what I'm doing over here. I get pulled up to whatever do I was this. doing. And Tag, then, you're it. Yeah. You know, I get plopped there. And it's just that's crawl. a funny story, that's by the way. That's probably one of the funny stories. The other thing is, I loved giving blowjobs, so I that was like a thing. And one time we were with four, three other couples. And so I went guy to guy to guy to guy, and then I came back to him and I went, okay, I'm four for four. <laughs> like it was some kind of f***ing contest. <laughs> but like, okay, I'm really good at jobs. <laughs> but now it's a whole different thing. I love women. I love their energy. I love the way they feel. I love connecting with them. I'm in love with a woman. It's a whole different thing. And I think a lot of women get very scared of other, a lot of women in the lifestyle get scared of other women. Like it's a flirty thing. It's a thing you do on the dance floor. You, it's the initiator, the mating the ritual, swing, right. the train <laughs> thing. I can't even anymore. And it's, that's not, that, that thing with women is just so magical to me now. Like I've, I am truly bisexual now and I wasn't. I, I did not like eating pussy. Huh. Now I do. Right. Do you think that that happened because there were a couple of women that came into your life that the timing was right and that just was a relationship that you had with them? Or was that kind of part of that break and then now you're in a different space and place in your life? I think it was because I did have a girlfriend that kissed me back then and I felt it. But I really wasn't open much to it. I'm like, I would do anything. I'm one of those do anything people. Like, I'll go anywhere, experience anything. But to really love something, I think I had to be older. I think I had to be accepting of welcoming people, feeling their energy, I guess, would be the thing. It's hard to explain that. Right. Well, that's why I was asking. Yeah, I I'm not necessarily like, super fascinated by women but now i i love that it's the energy swap mm -hmm. right right so you've allowed yourself to be open to have those connections yeah 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 and they have been exactly amazing for you it sounds like absolutely oh that's wonderful just like you guys <laughs> it's perfect well thank you this is an amazing conversation. I'm so happy that we that we met you guys. Well, thanks for having us. I oh, want to thank you so much thank uh, you. for for sitting here with us this afternoon, but being so open to being open and honest, and, um, Why and allowing us to talk. Well, because not everybody does feel okay talking yeah. about it, but. When learn. we met last night you and I said, will you come and please talk about this and because we of the fact that you were in the lifestyle, then you took a break and then back again and had those experiences and now have the, the expertise and the maturity and a different level. And it's just, I think there's so many people that just never feel like they could ever do anything like this. And it's like, but here we are. And they so could. And I have vanilla friends that I, I'm not shy about talking about my lifestyle because I think it's important and when you explain those connections I wouldn't tell all my friends but there are chosen few that I open up to and I think that's important and it's important to tell them yeah you can you can do that yes you're still sexual and you can still have feelings mm -hmm. and emotions and, and want to be excited <laughs> absolutely when does that stop? Like, well, I don't think it stops. Someone better let us know. There's no manual that we're all fi following. I don't know, but, uh, uh, you know, people will think that it's supposed to stop for women at menopause. Well, so I asked my nurse practitioner, I was like, so how long can I do this? Like, why would you stop? <laughs>
There Why you would go. You even stop? Okay, stamp of approval. You've been All right. moving Medical on. Professional. Good answer. That's right. Good answer. Okay. Good to know. I won't be. <laughs> no. Well, thank you guys so much for thank coming you. on and thanks with for, us. And, thanks uh, for asking. Thanks for asking. Share your shade, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Bye. Oh my gosh. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> they I they were just the most amazing amazing couple. Yeah. I mean, you can tell. Yeah. We were so excited to talk to them and then to hear just the information that they shared was just mind-blowing and we hope that you guys get as much out of it as we did when we talked to them. Well, first of all, we were just incredibly excited to meet them in the first place the oh, night yeah. before and it was completely organic. And like you literally what? bumped into her. Yeah. Yeah. And then the started bar. talking. And then yeah. I came along and then we all started talking. And then all six of us started talking. And that's when you asked, Hey, can we interview you? Yes. Well, when I met them, we were in the club. I was Friday night at the meet and greet and it's club lighting. You talk about you put out a vibe and you have energy. Mm-hmm. And they together are just the warmth and love and everything that comes from them. And so she's not kidding. Like I walked past her in the bar and kind of stopped to double take just from the energy that was there. And it was just, it's, they ooze that. And yes. so I could hardly even see them. And so it was just, it didn't matter. It didn't matter what they looked like. It was just the, this amazing energy. And sure enough, they turned out to be amazing people. It was it was really cool yeah. to have it happen that way. Absolutely. Yes. So they came and chatted with us and instantly talking to Lynn standing there at the bar. And when I found out how old she was, she's a little bit older than we are. <laughs> they are and that was why i instantly said oh my god can you please and she's so open we're so instantly open i said will you please come talk to us tomorrow yeah and so they did yeah yes but can you believe it they've been doing this they had been in the lifestyle she said she was he was late 30s she was early 40s in the 90s yeah and that it was such a different time back then yeah can you imagine doing that when you when we were in our 30s and 40s yeah no absolutely not right no, this we, is second, we. This is not their first relationship. Right. I don't know if they've been married multiple times, but their kids are from other relationships, from what I recall. So that's why I think when she said that their relationship when they got together was all sex right. based, it sounded like that. I don't know what their original story was, but um, but that was where they were. And so in the '90s, when you know, I loved hearing her talk about it, it was a different time back then mm-hmm. about how you could interact with people. And when they got back into the lifestyle two years ago, three years ago, they actually needed a a mentor. Yeah. And so, but I think that's a function of not just the time between the nineties and the early 2020s, but as they've evolved as well, Mm. which they, you know, they talked very openly about that, you know, they're different people now, obviously than, than, than they were in the, in the nineties. And so as they've evolved, I think that their experience of the lifestyle and their interest in the lifestyle have evolved. Well, actually, and they even commented about how their own dynamic changed Mm -hmm. in the sense that before they were much more the sport fucking type and uh, one and done or they didn't really care or yeah, you have some connection and things like that. But that has totally shifted for them, it sounds like. Or those relationships, the relationship side is more important than the sex side. Yeah. And yet they're still finding these amazing relationships and having these amazing sexual experiences, but relationships. Yeah. And more than once she used the word wisdom bringing wisdom to this lifestyle Mm -hmm. and in the context of their growth in the context of where they are now 30 years later and the wisdom that they've obtained yeah it's just amazing and so i think it's it's fascinating you know the transition and the continuum from sport fucking to polyamory essentially is what she was telling us yeah, they're they're interested in yeah. in they're they're open to that and yeah. would be interested if that came across their path. Right. And now they have they both have girlfriends and things, but yeah, and how she just now discovered compersion. Right. Well, and, and she's like blown away. She's like, "Oh my god, there's this thing." <laughs> yeah, there's and, this thing called conversion. There's a thing and and I kind of get turned on by I I'm, yeah. I'm so happy. We're like, "Yeah, yeah." Like lots of people do, but she she was so like this thing, this really great thing. <laughs> It's mm-hmm. like, it was so awesome because that was something that was so brand new for them. Yeah. And hearing him talk about the fact that for them, where they were, that 
being more relationship based with their lovers was not what they could have done in their 30s and 40s because of egos and, mm-hmm. and jealousy and insecurities when they were younger versus now they don't have those things. And so they're able to open themselves up to allow others to come in. Yeah. And her stark distinction between the purely sexual swingers mm-hmm. and she talked about very hard boundaries where you can't let any emotion in. And her saying, well, fuck that. That's not what we are. Well, that's exactly what we have done. Right. right. So, yeah. Without even knowing it. Yeah, without even knowing it. We just we just have been true to ourselves and how we face the world. And I think that that is really a great point. Because in all three of these couples, or three of these dynamics, because the, the second one was the thruple, in all three of these dynamics and us, we have been strong enough to stay true to the dynamic that works for us now. We stayed true to our own journeys. Kimberly and Steve staying true to being slow in the driveway. Mm-hmm. That's what they wanted to do. They are still slow in the driveway, but they have, I think they're on the street now. They're slow in the street. Um, <laughs> they're, they're slow in the cul-de-sac. They're slow in the cul-de-sac. That's right. But they're able to do and go at their own pace. And then mm-hmm. the young thruple, it's been 10 years, but then all of a sudden this this new blossoming love and relationship between them and they are gangbusters man they are all in and then this fabulous couple with Hugh and Lynn hearing them talk about how before they were this way and now they're this way and they've run the spectrum within the lifestyle and I'm sure it goes back and forth for them probably pretty easily there are times actually I think Lynn even commented she did say yeah that I like the sport yeah if sport fucking comes it's it's not not what what it's about about anymore it's still fun (laughs) yeah it's still fun but it's not what I'm about anymore but that was different. It sounded mm-hmm. like that was reversed. So just it, fascinating and so great to get three different dynamic yeah. groups to talk to and it yeah. all <laughs> organically. At, no, at, at three different levels mm-hmm. in their journeys. Mm-hmm. It's incredible. Yes. And yeah, uh, other thing. And we did plan Kimberly and Steve, but we didn't know that they were going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. We just thought no, they we were going to talk, talk about, about the party. Facebook page. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're so we were, we were thrilled when they started actually talking about <laughs> yes. their dynamic. And it, and it adds so much to this kind of the panoply of the story yes. that we can see kind of a whole continuum of, of lifestyle experiences. I so hope that we will be able to talk to Lynn and Hugh again. Mm-hmm. And I also so hope that you listeners have enjoyed hearing these stories because we loved talking to these folks and hearing their stories. And that's why we want to kind of do some more of these things and share more stories with everybody. So on that note, I'm going to say, if you have a story to share Mm -hmm. or you want to talk to us or you want to be on the podcast, you can reach out to us. We actually, if you're ever going to be at Caliente, we can come there. We do recording. We're going to be there this weekend. So, um, you know, you never know when we're going to be there. Just reach out to us. But We get so many different viewpoints and opinions and thoughts and ideas from everybody that it's just awesome to hear all the different ways that people are doing the thing that we love. Yeah. And one of the things that we've heard consistently over the three years now that we've been doing the podcast on, yeah, it is going on three years. Yeah. Is um, people love to live vicariously through Mm. us. Mm -hmm. And we've always interpreted that as they want to live vicariously through us in terms of our sexual escapades. But let me tell you all this, just the people that we get to meet Mm. day in and day out in this lifestyle, especially when we're hanging out at places like Caliente or going to events like Podbash, the people that we meet is so rewarding. And it's such a huge part. And I think the larger part of this for us. It has become that and we never expected. We didn't expect that. We didn't expect any of this. We didn't think we'd do a podcast. So of course we wouldn't do that. So yet another way to live vicariously through us (laughs) (laughs) is to listen to our interviews of these amazing people. Yes, absolutely. And really fast before we go, I do want to say, speaking of other places that we'll be, We are going to the Tampa erotic event that's going to be happening in a couple of weeks, Mm -hmm. beginning of November, Mm -hmm. uh, here in Tampa. November 4th. So um, they are doing Friday night and Saturday night. I think that's going to be coming right up around the corner by the time this episode goes. But if you're interested in that, um, look that up on the website. We will be there for sure. And we're really excited about uh, what they've got coming up in 2024. So make sure you follow them as well. Uh, We just, we love their group and and they're, they're just nice people. Yeah, absolutely. They want everybody in the lifestyle have a really good time. So it's it's nice. It feels good. Go to TampaErotic.com. Um, it's Tampa Erotic. You can get all the details of this event and other upcoming events. Right. And you can always follow us on Instagram. 
mm-hmm. and Twitter and our YouTube channel. We've got a lot more little blurbs and snippets on our YouTube channel, by the way. So if you want to check out any of our podcasts that have been got some clips and things going on there for, for our YouTube channel. But uh, on Instagram, it's uh, Accidental Swingers. On Twitter, it's the same. Or you can always email me at marina at accidentalswingers.com. Or if you want to reach out to Tristan, you can find him at... On Instagram, I'm Marina's Tristan. Yes, he is. And Tristan <laughs> at accidentalswingers.com. Yes. All right. Um, I think that's about it. Yes. Yeah. This was awesome. And I'm excited to talk to a lot more people yeah, and share too. other people's stories with the world so that everybody can see you don't, you're not going to do this perfectly. It's not sometimes the easiest route, but there's so many other people that have done this. We're excited to share that with you. Absolutely. Right? Right. All right. Well, then that's it for this time. That's it. All right. We'll see you next time. Until next time. Good night. Bye. Love this episode of The Accidental Swingers? Pop on over to your favorite podcast platform and subscribe to our show. And while you're there, you can leave us a review. You can also visit our website, accidentalswingers.com, to get show notes, read our blog, or find out about our next adventure. Join us next time and listen along as we bumble our way through this adventure that we call The Lifestyle.